Dr Fran Boyt, the Executive Director at Positive Money. Good afternoon to you, Fran. Um, there was a suggestion today uh, from a former economist at the Bank of Ireland that what is needed uh, to prop up the economy and to prop up people's incomes is just to print money and put it directly into their bank accounts, helicopter money as it's known. What, what do you think about that? So helicopter money has been an idea that's been gaining traction for a few years um, and we're kind of supportive of the, the two main um, areas that it that it talks about. Uh, there's a few different meanings by helicopter money but generally it, as you said it's about getting money directly uh, to citizens so direct cash um, into citizens pockets and households and the second element of it is that it's um, financed by central bank funding so monetary financing and both of these have been talked about quite extensively obviously since the economic fallout of the pandemic has has worsened um, and they're both you know good ideas you know if we look at the figures there's been I think over 1.8 million people um, applying for universal credit and we know that there's up to a five-week wait which can plunge people into debt potentially poverty um, and so you know in order to ensure households stay afloat through this and there's an incredible amount of uncertainty in the economic fallout in the you know in the weeks and months and potentially years to come then getting money directly into households is going to be key um, and, and, and the Fran what, what do you think it is about the government package which I mean is is unprecedentedly large uh, that that's not working is it is it the transmission mechanism through the banks where it's just getting gummed up and not getting to those who need it I mean, you know, the government has taken some really key steps. Um, you know, we, we have to realise, I think, one in five workers are furloughed at the moment. So, you know, through the job retention scheme, that's really key that they're getting those funds. Um, but we've got to also remember the government was quite late to act in March. And actually, um, before that was announced, people were being made unemployed. That's also combined with the fact that we have very high numbers of insecure work, people on zero hour contracts and low pay. Um, and so, you know, the simple matter of the fact is that the the schemes that they've unrolled haven't you know won't work for everyone and there was huge issues with the universal credit you know previously where many people were finding themselves waiting for five weeks five weeks when you have to pay your rent your bills cover your food for your family you know people are going to be um, in really difficult situations and so unless we really look at creating a safety net for everyone then we can see could see you know millions of people um, you know really going under that poverty line, which is quite a scary prospect. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm just going to ask, though, I mean, the whole concept of, of helicopter money, it's quite a blunt instrument, isn't it? I mean, when you think about how to make it most effective, at what level do you set it? I mean, how long do you have to keep spraying it around for it, to, for it to work? I mean, you know, there are a lot of different economists saying it should be used for different things. And so, you know, a key number of economists say that actually, you know, it's about the central bank expanding its balance sheet, doing direct monetary financing, and it should really be... Um, uh, we should really wait to use it until we really want to boost demand when the uh, economy ends, you know, when lockdown ends and we really want to get people spending, if you like. Um, so, again, that's an, another kind of reason why it's argued for. But I totally agree that there's a lot of uncertainty, how much, how long. Um, and that's why we, we should see, really, the, the government talking and thinking about this now rather than waiting. Because as we saw Thursday, you know, the Bank of England said we're going to see... A, at least a 14% contraction of the economy, which is incredibly severe. And that's a scenario, you know, we really don't know um, how bad this is going to get. Um, but, and so but, but the Bank of England did also say, forgive me for interrupting, um, that the recovery will be quicker than what we saw after the great financial crisis. So I suppose the other concern is you, you do these expensive measures and then they end up putting inflation in the economy and then you've got another problem to deal with. I mean, they very much said this was a scenario, not a forecast. And many economists have kind of criticised, saying they've been overly optimistic. I think, you know, what this um, pandemic is is really um, making us all ask is what's the point of the economy if it's not to protect people's lives, put their health and well-being first? And I think that, you know, what we're seeing is that many things are possible, things that we never would have dreamed the government doing have, have happened, whether that's, you know, fair, um, funding people's um, jobs so they 
they can you know, be furloughed, uh, whether it's the Bank of England saying we will do direct monetary financing. And so now I think when there is so much uncertainty, it's exactly the right time to be talking about all the options on the table. And I think helicopter money, getting those direct cash transfers to household has to be a key part of that mix. Okay, Fran Boyd, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.